All right, Shabbat Shalom, everyone who's watching here today. Um, um, and, and, and welcome to Covenant Calendar, uh, hosted by uh, Brandon Muchmore, Conrad Paris, and myself, Jose Passarell. Uh, we are stewards of Torah to the Tribes, and we bring to you teachings each week, Yah willing, uh, to edify the, the body and um, um, through our um, studies and bring you the most accurate covenant calendar that Yahuwah um, has had ordained since the beginning. Um, today, Conrad uh, will go ahead and go over, um, you know, what day of the week uh, that the Israelites leave Ramses, Egypt. Uh, and then, you know, how long did it take them to get to Mount Sinai? And it's going to go into very much detail about, about this uh, sequence of events. And he will also uh, revisit, and if you haven't watched this teaching, it's about uh, Numbers 33. Um, so we're going to revisit that. He's going to go in, into some other details that he didn't touch up on uh, last time he taught about this last week. So he will also concretely prove the 360-day calendar uh, using this, um, this, this context of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the scriptures at uh, Ben Ben. In mid mark which means numbers. Well, I hope you all are blessed by it and um, and are edified by this wonderful teaching Connor is about to do. Um, and Shabbat Shalom. All right. So whenever you're ready, brother. All right. Hello, shalom, brothers and sisters. Let me warn you first, this is a very difficult teaching because you're going to have to think too as well. You just can't lay back and just I feed you and put this down your throat. So bear with me, bear with the teaching understand these scriptures calendar language it's something new but that's good it's elohim breathe it's about your salvation in a sense it gives you indications what i would like you to do since i prayed about this please can you read exodus 19 to 24 Torah to the tribe was given the understanding of the book of the covenant between Exodus 19 and 24. It's one of the foundations. Of course, Yeshua is the foundation, but it is one of the foundations of Torah to the tribe's understanding of the book of the covenant and the dichotomy or the division between the book of the law. So you can read Exodus 19 to 24 and come back and let's say how many times did Moses went up to the mountain in Sinai. I would love to see how many of you would give the answer whether it is four or five or six and we can come together and discuss it you may have a different ascent or you may say five some may say four and we can bring these together because it is fundamentally important for covenant calendar these ascent between exodus 19 and 24. be challenged enough and do that homework so we can have that for next time or next week or two weeks or next month or let me continue here i know that is um, a very difficult teaching here but the creator is going to help you and guide you if he so desire the topic here is what day of the week 
Did the Israelites left Ramesses, Egypt, the day after the Passover? Bid me by Numbers 33, verse 3. It says, the Israelites set out from Ramesses, Egypt. It is specific. It has a date on the 15th day of the first month. But it did not say what day of the week they left. Understand Kalanda language. It just gave a date of the first month. And then it be specific the day after the Passover that was just discussed by Jose's power slide. Again, it gives a date, but it did not give the day of the week. Think about that. It's a difficult lesson, something new, and they match out in full view of all Egyptians. So we're gonna find out what day of the week was the 15th on a one to seven weekly cycle. That's clear enough, I think. Then the other one, the concrete proof for the 360 days covenant. That is important. Covenant calendar is solar, not lunar solar or a lunar calendar like the Muslims. We have here power slide number two. The stages of Israel's journey of Bimidbar, that's the Hebrew word, Numbers 33 and verses 3, and Shemot, Exodus 16.1. The whole Israelite community set out from Elim and came to the desert of Sin. This year, represents a desert. And they came on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. For you to understand this, you have to have a calendar that you can do it yourself. And do it yourself, you can do it. But you have to be taught how to do it. You have never been taught how to do calendar, do you? You just assume there, Roman Gregorian calendar, and you can copy it if you so desire. But when it comes to covenant calendar, it is a total different thing to the Gregorian calendar. That's a problem that we are having. Understand this, and I will show you the position of some others who was before without calling any names what they taught and i am not saying names you may be acquainted with it if you were there previously and i'm going to give you their position and then i'm going to give you another position which is proposed. At least we have this platform that Matthew Nolan has given as, to, as we are stewards of the calendar. And of course, I take that very seriously. Now, let us move ahead here. This word quickly, bid me bar. I want to explain this. It's a Hebrew word, but the translators, the LXX, call it numbers. Because when they read oh, what you call numbers one and numbers 26 and the stages of the Israelites' journey, they actually call it numbers. But in Hebrew, Bimidbar is called the wanderings or in the desert or in the wilderness from Sinai 
to the plains of Moab. So there's a difference here. Be Midbar means wanderings in the desert, and Numbers is when the translators of the LXX saw Numbers 1 and 26 and the stages of the Israelites' journey from not from um, not from Bidmebar 33, they call it numbers. I hope that makes um, understanding why Bidmebar and why numbers. One is Hebrew, the other is Greek, in which we get English here. Now we continue with the wilderness journey. Take a note here. This is the wilderness that represents the Param, Sin, and Sinai. Revelation 12, 14 in the other power slide. The woman. Matthew Nolan just finished up Revelation, so this should be fresh on our minds. The woman, and it's coming up too. The woman here represents the congregation of Israel of the Melchizedek order, a place in the desert prepared for her. See this desert? A place in the desert prepared for her, the woman of Revelation 12 and verse 14. Out of the serpent's reach. Then the congregation of Israel under the Levitical priesthood. One will be under the Melchizedek priesthood, which you and I are now. Then the congregation of Israel under the Levitical priesthood in the deserts of Sin. I don't know why they mention S-I-N. Sinai, Sin means to miss the mark in, the, of course, transgressions here. Then Sinai, another S-I-N. Then Paran, of Bidmibar numbers. Okay, you see that? Sin represent the desert of sin or the wanderings. It represents Sinai and it represents Paran. All right. Let us see the differences of these of these two congregations of Israel. The woman in the desert of Revelation 12 14, she is born from above. She has the set apart spirit. She has the faith of Yahusha. She's under a new covenant founded on better promises. She is out of the serpent's reach. She has the Torah written on the fleshly tables of her heart. She is of the Melchizedek priesthood, Hebrews 6.20. She is protected and her needs met like food and water. Remember the congregation that was in sin, Sinai and Paran, they never went to bed hungry, even though they were rebellious. They always had manna and the father never kept manna from them because of their disobedience. They always had what? Food, manna every day for 40 years. Food and water for this woman after the Melchizedek priesthood as well. She is not ignorant of the previous congregation of Israel's calamities that served as examples and were written down as what warnings for her of whom the fulfillment, we are going to complete the fulfillment of the ages in Greek is aion, ages mean a period of time has come. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 11. She is the bridegroom wife of Yahusha, portrayed by his blood. That's that woman. The other, or the congregation of Israel in the desert represents woman. The congregation of Israel, the other, Woman, oh, congregation of Bidmibar, numbers in the desert, deserts, had no set apart spirit in them. They were extremely carnal, rebellious, 
set their hearts on evil things. They grumbled. They tested Yahuwah, killed by snakes, lack of faith, disobedience, indulged in pagan reverie, all under the Levitical priesthood, the Torah written on letters of stone. Let us sink in here for a while here. That is what we have here in this desolate area. And there's where the Father speak to us and we are very attentive in what he has to say because there is no Wi-Fi and Netflix and to distract us from concentrating upon what he has to say in the desert when we flee and hopefully soon. Now we go here to what we, I, again, read how many times Moses went up to the mount between, using Exodus 19 to 24. And I would like to see how many ascent. It's very important what you get. You may be right, you may be wrong, but no problem. But you can participate as well. This exhibit A proposed by others some. You may be acquainted with them or not. Another exhibit proposed to show when did the Israelites left Ramesses, Egypt, on the 15th day of the first month and arrived at the desert of Sin on the 15th day of the second month. Here is the calendar that they had. You see the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day in black and white. We call it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But in Torah, it just call it first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, Shabbat. We have it on Gregorian. Unfortunately, sometimes it can become confusing. The first month, the first year at the equinox was on the fourth day, we call it a Wednesday. I have to use these terms for a better understanding. The Passover that came was on a Tuesday. And the 15th day was the first day of 11th bread. And according to them, they traveled three days. And then the 18th was a Shabbat. So now we have a calendar and it is showing that when they left, Ramesses was on the 15th on a Wednesday. And then they arrived, some 14, then they arrived here on the 15th, here, which we see on the second month. The second month is when they arrived here on the 15th, which is what? On the sixth day which is a Friday. Now, if you have here from the 16th to the 30th here of the month, you have here one, two, three, four. You have, of course, um, if you add, if you came here on the 15th and you have the 16th, you have, you, I have to add, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. From the fifteenth, listen good, to the thirtieth, you would get sixteen days. However, if you begin um, bring the sixteenth to the thirtieth, would be fifteen days but you still have the amount of time for 30 day month. So with the 15th and the 30, you have 16 days. But with the 16 and the 30th, you have 15 days, but both are still ending on the 30 day month, 30 days month. So this is what has been selected by others a Wednesday when they left Ramesses. Now hear what they say now. I want you to do something for me. 
challenge your own belief system to see if you are right. That is a difficult thing to do. Every detail must be taken into account. You cannot be sloppy. No calendar language says others, and the others is the one who said that themselves in which I am just quoted. Now, what the others support is not a choose they pass over, and also when they came out of Ramesses was on a Wednesday. That is what they support. And the three days journey, the journey on the first day, the first day of 11 bread, then the 16th, then the 17th, and the 18th was a Shabbat, according to Exodus 15, in which they had the song of Moses. Understand that so far, okay? That is what they support. However, notice they traveled on the first day of unleavened bread, according to them. And it's definitely according to bid me bar is when they traveled because 15 definitely is the first day of unleavened bread. Then the second month, they arrived here, according to them here, 15th, and the 15th here, according to, again, scripture, 15th day of the second month. Now you have a day. You have a day when you do the calendar of the 30-day month. Then the quails came on ben ha ha in which the whole Israelite community including the mixed multitude, all of them, including the mixed multitude, and they grumbled. And this was, of course, on the 15th here, they grumbled against Moses. And then, according to them, there is where the 16th, the quails were cooked, were caught, eaten between the mixings. So they arrived on the 15th, on the sixth day, and then the next day is when the quails came around Ben Hahabayim, between the mixins where they were cooked, clean, and eaten. And Elohim, no doubt, winked at this. Acts 17, 13, he says, in the time... Elohim's winked at their ignorance, according to Saul or Paul in Acts chapter 17. That's what he says. And according to them, they were not given full instructions as yet, and so they were not held accountable as yet. They were not given full instructions when they caught the quails cooked the quails and ate them at Ben Harbahim. Full instructions were not given as yet, even though it was on the seventh day Shabbat. Now, according to Paul, I'm going to read what he has to say here. And where there is no Torah, there is no transgression. That is Romans 5.15. And then he quoted it an another here again in Romans 5, that sin is not taken into account when there is no law. So now from the 17th, the 18th, the 19th, the 20th, and the 21, and the 22nd, a double portion of manna, and then the seventh, then on the 23rd, the seventh day Shabbat was revealed. And here is the support it was according to them was the manner came as a test and they got the scriptures exodus 16 verse 4 in this way sometimes you have to read torah you have to be careful how you read it because sometimes you don't get that language as it should because sometimes we call it you know 
not sloppy Hebrew, but you know, translators have sometimes difficulty in getting the Hebrew and the Greek into Anglo-Saxon English, and sometimes misinformation could occur. So let the work Hakadesh guide you when you read these scriptures. Be very careful, just a warning. In Exodus 16, verse 4, in this way, says Elohim, I will test them and see, I'm going to test them. I'm going to send manna on, the, on this week, and I'm going to test them to see whether they will follow my instructions. And on the 23rd of the second month, according to the others, was when the seventh day Shabbat was revealed, set apart, was in the second month on the 23rd, because they left here, Ramesses, on the 15th day of the first day of unleavened bread. Moving ahead. I hope that this is enough to show on the account of others where they get this information from. Continue on here quickly. Exhibit A continues. I spoke to this, arrived at the desert of sin on the 15th day of the second month. He didn't say here what day, but we, during the 30-day calendar, we know it would have been the 15th. We know the 16th, the quails came. We just spoke about it. Now we have here a sum of the things of Exodus 19.1 says, we're not into the third month. Now they're saying that they arrived on the fourth. In the third month, back up here, after the Israelites left Egypt, here are these idioms or terms used. And this could be misunderstood. It says here, on the very day, or the same day, or on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai. This is what they believe. Because they left on a Wednesday, and this is what I was praying about, because they left on a Wednesday, that this Exodus 19.1 was the, what? It was not the 15th. It was the fourth of the third month. Not here. Look at the cursor. If it is the 15th, like the 15th in Bidmibar 33, and also the 15th in the Exodus 16 one, I'm going slow here, it's not so. It's the fourth, not the 15th. So if you were to say the 15th, you are wrong. Because this very day, or the same day, or that very day, would be the fourth, a Wednesday, when they left on the first month on a Wednesday too. Listen good. That is what they have believed. Okay, I think um, I prayed about this. That is that is the other position is going to come up. And then they camped at the foot of the mountain. That's why it says, read Exodus 19 to 24 and let us know how many ascent between Exodus 19 and 24. We need to discuss this as a covenant calendar club. That is important. You can come up with your ascent because I'm going to show you something what Jubilees miss the point themselves. Then Exodus 19, 10 to 11, in which he says today, 
I'm going to quote this because this is very important here. As I really move on here, let me read Exodus 19 10. And Yahuwah said to Moses, So here is what they say. They arrived on Wednesday the 4th, they camped on Thursday the 5th day at the foot of the mountain. Then Moses went up there with his ascent on the 6th. He went up the mountain, went down the mountain, went, he went up the mountain, got the proposal. We talk about this a lot, talking to the tribes. He went down again with the proposal and the people accepted. And he went back up on the mountain again and told Yahuwah what they said. You get that so far? Right. I hope so. I have to, have to repeat that again. It says here, 1910, go to the people and consecrate them today, Friday, okay? And tomorrow, seven-day Shabbat. That's it, what he says. Have them wash their clothes. What? On the seven-day Shabbat? And then the Ten Commandments on the third day, I will come down on Mount Sinai. Now, to get around this here, to wash clothes on the seventh day Shabbat, do you know what they say? Wash clothes physically on the sixth day, preparation day, and on the seventh day Shabbat, wash clothes spiritually. That is how they got around it. I say, what? This is there position. I hope you get the message. And then on the eighth day, the Ten Commandments was given. Now we have Exhibit B proposed to show when did the Israelites left Ramesses, Egypt on the 15th day of the first month arrive in the desert of sin on the 15th day of the second month. We, I and we have taken a position. Now you can have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day, but this week ch never changes. Period. You can have your dates can be different on the week. Got that? Your dates can be different on the week. But your seventh day does not change. But your dates can change on the seventh day week. Get that understanding. I hope you get that understanding. Something new, but learn. Your seventh day week, I need to repeat this over and over again because you have to get acquainted with this calendar. Yes, use Gregorian to help you to get the dates because you would not know. You are not familiar with this covenant calendar that the Father gave Moses, which is Elohim breed. In Hebrew, letters get numbers, statistics, all cardinal numbers and all their numbers from the Hebrew alphabet in which you get numbers, cardinal numbers, all the numbers. Remember that. So it is still Elohim breed, just like the words. Here we have here, your seventh day week, I'm spending time on this does not change. It is your dates that, ch that change using the seventh day week. So now we have changed the date from the fourth day, a Wednesday, to a seventh day Shabbat for the new year at the equinox. And then the 15th, was would have been the first day of unleavened bread 
It doesn't matter. You can always leave Ramesses. You guys already want to choose the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day. You will be leaving Ramesses according to what X, I mean, bid me bar 33 on the first day of unleavened bread. Get that clear, irregardless. That's scripture. Okay? Get that. Whether you think it was on the seventh day Shabbat or on the first day of unleavened bread, you will be leaving Ramesses. Period. And we have here the 10th day the lambs were chosen, which was going to be when? That first year would have been when? On the second day of the week, a Monday. And then you have the Passover, which would have going to be next year, when on 2020, so far, unless there's some change. And we're going to have this Passover on the 14th, next year, 2021. And we're going to have what? The first day of unleavened bread next year, the 15th. As a example, when the new year comes on a seven-day Shabbat. We are still postulating here. Now, the second month is when they arrived where? The desert of sin on the, a Monday, on, on, on a Monday or the second day. Then when they arrived. Now, the quails came here on the 20th. If you use the other one, is on the 16th. Notice the difference, but on, on the exhibit A, and then now on exhibit B, the quails now come on the 20th. Because we are using, the, we are still using the seventh day. It's our dates that is changing on the seventh day. It is fixed. It is unlocked. But I always ask a question, can it be locked? Can it be locked? Well, let's have some fun. Let us not be pharisaical, please. Okay, so far, so good. So now the quiz come on the 20th. Then you have the manna, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Double portion of manna, and the seventh day Shabbat is revealed. Hear it. The same thing, like what? The same as, the same as before, the same as here. It's our dates that is changing, okay, on A, but B here is saying is on the 27th, which is the second month on the 27th of the second month. Notice seven means perfection. Seven means completion, I like this, on the second month, on the 27th of the second month, in which they were tested to see whether or not they were going to walk in the Creator's laws or not. And he tests them. So sometimes we are being tested like Abraham, and the Father is going to test us too. Don't ever think for one moment, maybe this is your test here today, or some other test, maybe next week or tomorrow, and we pray that we will pass the test every time when we are being tested. Not tempted. He doesn't tempt no man. Exhibit B continues. They arrived at the desert of sin on the 15th day, second month. On the 16th, in Exodus 16, 1. Now in Exodus 19, 1 says, in the third month, after the Israelites left Egypt, on the very day, and rest is very important because this is covenant language. That is very important. Covenant language. Um, I have here, um, according to um, Exodus 19.1, I want to be here where other translators has created these words in the Hebrew. Some will say on the very day. Some will say on the same day. Some will say on that very day. They came to the desert of Sinai. I say we must postulate safely 
it had to be on the 15th day, like the first and second months of the 360 days year covenant calendar. I am saying, if they left Ramesses in the middle of the week on the 15th of the first month, if they came to the desert of sin as well on the 15th of the second month, then why is it that they could not come, arrived on the 15th at Mount Sinai? We also have the Feast of Ingathering Sukkot that we just celebrated that was in the middle of a 30-day month, the 15th too as well. The Day of Unleavened Bread is also the 15th too as well, in the middle of a 30-day month. And they came into the wilderness of sin on a 15th as well. Then why is it you cannot have the 15th here as well on the same day, on the very day, on that very day they came to the desert of Sinai? Why is it that you are saying they came on the fourth? Why not and saying that this is wrong? A lot of, I'm speaking a lot of calendar language. I hope you are following with me. So this is important. This is about, this is about calendar. Now in Exodus 9, so they arrived at Mount Sinai. On the 16th, they were at the foot of the mountain. Then Moses went up. And the father make a proposal. Moses went back down the mountain. And the people accepted the proposal. This is told to the tribe's language of Matching Orland that came and exposed this to us and talked about this so much. He went back up the mountain and told Yahweh, what they said. Then he said, here, once again, in Exodus, this is going to be on the fifth day that this occurred. Look good. I'm going to read the same thing again. And Yahweh said, go to the people which is the fifth day, called a Thursday on Gregorian, consecrate them today, the fifth day, Thursday, and tomorrow, double portion of manna on the sixth day, Friday, or in time to come, Makkah, Hebrew word, tomorrow, next day, and be ready on the third day, which is when the Ten Commandments were given, which would be 78 days from the first year or the first day of the first year. That is what I calculated here. And it is end with an eight, 18, 78 days as we had like the 190 for the Day of Atonement, 195, we would have 78 days from the, with the first of the year, and the 10 commandments were given. Notice you have some information here. Maybe for the first time you have known this, that based on the covenant calendar is when the 10 commandments were given on the 18th of the third month. Where would you get this from? You can't get this from Messianic Judaism, Orthodox Judaism. You get this from the covenant calendar where the Ten Commandments were given. And this will say, remember the seventh day Shabbat to set it apart. And you get this from Exodus 19.10. When they arrived at Mount Sinai on the 15th, It's something new, but know these things that the Creator wants you to know. 
What? Have you ever asked yourself the question? When was the Ten Commandments given? Have you ever asked yourself the question? When was the Ten Commandments given in the Torah? At least you have an indication at least. You may not believe this, but at least you have some indication. Maybe for the first time, or the second time, or the third time. Come on. What the Father has concealed, he will reveal. In the times of this ignorance, he winked at, but now he required all men everywhere to repent. I want to move ahead here because I'm passionate um, about this thing, but this is not the only thing, okay? Remember this, I don't have no obsession. I have obsession with the word, I better believe, because this is also of the word as well. And let the word, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my part. Because numbers and figures are all about words as well. Dibarim, it means words. That is called Deuteronomy. Diba, word. Let me continue on. No, that's why I tell you to read numbers. I mean, Exodus. Let me go ahead here. Now, when the Ten Commandments were given, Forget about my notes now, I'm gonna move ahead here. Moses, the people were afraid on this day. And this says, you speak to Elohim, don't speak to us or we will die. So Moses approached, that's why I said read it. And you're gonna find that in Exodus 19. And then Moses approached Elohim, um, I mean 20, 19 and 20 here. Approach Elohim in the thick darkness on the 18th. Okay? Approach Elohim in the thick darkness. And then Elohim now begin to give him words. Let me get my notes here. Words. And the words that he gave him would be between Exodus 21 and 23 when Moses approached the thick darkness on the same day when the Ten Commandments were given orally. And then he spoke to Moses about idols and altars. And then there were laws to be set before them, Exodus 21 to 23. And then you have the three annual festivals in Exodus 23 and he talked about prepare the way and then Moses wrote down everything Yahoo had said and so no doubt in the night because the next in chronological order he got up early in the morning you have to read that he got up early in the morning and early in the morning would have been what? Here on the 19th, in which the book of the covenant confirmed where in the third month, on the 19th day of the third month, on the first day of the week, a Sunday, there was another covenant confirmed in Acts for the Melchizedek priesthood, for the 3,000 that received the set-apart spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, on the first day of the week as well. You see patterns, types, shadows, antitypes, all in scripture. So here is the book of the covenant confirmed on the third month, on the 19th, of the third month on the first day of the week. And then a covenant meal occurred on that day, Exodus 9, 11, in which you had Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders as well. Then they were up there in the mountain, and then you have Moses was there, and they had a meal. Then Moses had another ascent. 
it was a higher ascent. He was on the mountain, yes, but he had a, a higher ascent when he left them there on the mountain. And he walked with Joshua. Joshua also had a lower descent than Moses, and the elders has, had the lowest descent. So you have three ascent with the elders, with Joshua, with Moses, and then with whom Elohim, the highest ascent. And according to the scriptures, that Mount Sinai covered with smoke for six days. So the 19th, it was covered with smoke when Moses went up to the mountain in the higher ascent. And the, on the same day, when the book of the covenant was confirmed. So you have six days, the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th. On the 25th, it says here, which is the seventh day Shabbat, Mo, he called for Moses from within the cloud. He called for Moses from within the cloud. So six days here, it, it is reported, it is recorded, and here you have another, what? Seventh-day Shabbat. Because according to Exodus 16, 26, on the seventh day is a Shabbat. One, two, three, four, five, six. A Shabbat. 25th, a Shabbat. 18th, a Shabbat. Think about this. I'm pausing here. You see the calendar? This is something fresh. This is something new. Something fresh. It's going to challenge you. Let me summarize. Moving ahead here. To summarize, Exodus 19 to 24, Moses arrived on on the 15th, went up the mount on the 16th. Then in, in Exodus 19:1, Elohim told him to consecrate them today, the 16th, and tomorrow, the 17th, and be ready for the third day, the 18th. Was the Ten Commandments spoken orally on the seventh day Shabbat, and the next day, the 19th, the first day of the week? The Book of the Covenant confirmed, on the 360 days a covenant calendar, read Exodus 19.24 for the whole account. Covenant Calendar Club is not an advocate of the 364 days a calendar of the Book of Jubilees. The pseudepigrapha means author unknown. That's what the word means, a big word. I don't know why they use these big words, pseudepigrapha. It means author unknown. Book of an Ethiopia collection in which accounted for the six largest of fragments found in Qumran. We do not advocate any three 64 days of, of the book of Jubilees or Enoch. However, in the book of chapter one, it states, and it came to pass in the first year of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt in the third month, on the 16th day of the month, Elohim spoke to Moses. Let me go back to here because they had a misunderstanding. They are saying it was the 16th. Okay? But they're wrong. It should have been the 19th. They did they overlook something like so many of us have done. I'm going to show you this, what happened. In the third month, I'm going to quote this, on the 16th day of the month from Jubilees, Elohim, the say God, spoke to Moses saying, come up to the mount and I will give you two tables of stones of the law. That is correct. And I'm, that is correct. They are correct. But their chronology is out of order with the date. Because according to 19, that is what was being said by, I mean, according to 24, Exodus 24, that is what was said. And I'm going to repeat this here, Exodus 24, 12. They are right. Come up to me on the mountain and stay here and I will give you tablets of stones with the law and commands I have written for their instructions. 
But Jubilees is saying it was the 16th of the third month. But according to the Masoretic text, in which we get our scriptures from, and the LXX as well, the Greek version, would have been the 19th of the third month. Their chronology is out of order. They did not consider the chronology. They just jump into it and say the 16th. Notice it. And that is what many still have done today. Under the sun, there's nothing new. The book of the covenant was confirmed on the 19th, not the 16th. On the 20, Exodus 24 confirms this as well. So they make an error. But sure, they are more correct when they came in the third month and not on the fourth not on the fourth, as others has postulated. At least they are much more correct, though wrong. The covenant confirmed the 19th of the third month, first day of the week. The 16th day of the third month, they went to Exodus 24, 12, first. There's where these guys went to first. In the opening chapter one of the book of Jubilees, ign totally ignoring Exodus 19.10, and Yahweh said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today, the 16th, and tomorrow, the 17th, double portion of manna on the sixth day, have them wash their clothes and be ready on the third day, not like the others um, who postulated it was on the seventh day Shabbat, the 18th, the chronology is out of order for the dates in the book of Jubilees. However, they did not support as a second witness the fourth day of the third month when the Israelite came to the desert of Sinai. You have to have two witnesses. And even though Jubilees is out of chronology by some three to four days, their support the 15th, nevertheless, not like the others. It is not, they wanted to have Pentecost, but Pentecost is not a Hebrew name. It's a Hellenist name called 50th day that Luke coined in, in, in the book of Acts. It is not about Pentecost. It is the given of the 10 commandments. Even Judaism is saying the six, they two are off to as well with the 6th of Sivan. If they want to know, it's the 18th of the third month. Not no 6th of Sivan on any lunar solar calendar. It's on, the, it's on what? The covenant calendar. It's not about Pentecost. It is the given of the Ten Commandments. And the book of the covenant confirmed. I have to shout aloud as I'm told. In um, Isaiah 58, 1, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Israel their sins. The Israelites, this is not an easy job. That's why you have to pray and ask for guidance. And if I'm wrong, I will change if I'm wrong because I challenge even my very own slides. I even challenge even what I believe. The Israelites did not celebrate Feast of Weeks. That's the Hebrew word, Shavuot. They call it Shavuot because from weeks to get Shavuot. Pentecost is Greek. Feast of Weeks. Notice I put Pentecost in the desert. It is an agricultural festival. Exodus 23, 16b, celebrate the festival of your harvest, of your crops. 
what you sow in the field, not what you see in the field. Book of the Covenant. And this is going to be very easy here. The concrete proof for the 360 days here, covenant calendar construction, solar, not lunar solar. I want you to pose this question to others below. How much time did it took when they left Ramesses? On the 15th day of the first month, first year, to when they left the desert of Sinai, on the 20th day of the second month in the second year. You have to understand again, covenant calendar language. It's something new. You have been brought here today for a reason. You have been chosen, you have been set apart for a purpose, for a reason. I don't know, the creator knows. However, ask this question, how much time did it took when they left Ramesses, which is in Bidmaba chapter 32, on the 15th day of the first month, first year, to when they left the desert of Sinai on the 20th day of the second month in the second year. Here we have 16 days left. I just told you this, including the 15th day, including the 15th day in the first month of the 30 days month of the first year. Then you have 11 more months. You multiply it by 30 days, equal 330, three 330 days. Then you add the 16 days, equal 346 days, and then the first year is concluded. So you have the 346 and the 14, that's, not, that's 360. So now what is left is 346 days. Then the 20th day of the second month of the second year equal 50 days. Very easy. Isn't that so? Like Pentecost, counting one, two, three. The 30 days month. You add 346 days plus 50 days equal what? 396 days equal one year solar, one month solar, six days Sola, the 360 days year covenant calendar construction cannot be lunar solar. But, but, but there's always a but. But there will be objections, and next power slide will address those disagreeing. Last slide the irrefutable evidence. You cannot dispute this, no matter how you try. Irrefutable evidence, full proof means it cannot go wrong. That's the word full proof means. For the 360 days here, covenant calendar used at Elohim's command, be made by numbers 33, one to two here, moving on, in the stages of the Israelites' journey in the wilderness. Okay? That's a reference here. Those who use Gregorian for lunar solar construction, which is Vogue, that is popular acceptance. You guys know about Vogue magazine. Did not exist in the time of Moses or the Israelites. Maybe that's why it is difficult for us to understand the calendar. These people did not have any Gregorian calendar to contend with. We have it to contend with. 
the tree 96 days on Gregorian is first year, first month. Then which month? March, July? Then the leap year, 396 days is one year, one month. Then which month? April, June? Therefore, any lunar solar construction of Gregorian 365 year or 366 cannot be Torah compliant. There is no such thing as 29.5 months in the Torah, all are 30 months. But there's another but. Now to those who believe, you see you have to answer all of these questions that the lunar months were at one time 30 days and the lunar year was also 360 days here as well. Then the 396 days of Bimidbar, Numbers 33, verse 3, and the 10, 11 would equal one lunar year, one lunar month, and six lunar days. What? In Genesis 1, 14 to 19, was not the sun that was given for days to count three 96 solar days? So even though you believe, and perhaps it may be right, I don't know, I was not there, that there used to be 30 days lunar and 360 days here as well. However, the scripture says, and the father of infinite intelligence, who knows the end from the beginning, Isaiah 46 verse 10, know that what they were going to do. It was the sun that was given for days, not no moon. Period. Numbers 396 solar days. They are not 396 lunar days. Even though you believe the year was 360 lunar days as well. It's not no lunar days, it's solar days given to the sun that produced days, year, months. Lunar solar constructionists cannot, cannot have it both ways. Like saying you can have your cake and eat it too. You cannot have it here in the Torah. Maybe some other place. Saying scriptural here is solar, months lunar. We have a big, big problem. Houston. No, this lunar sea must stop. Oh, Elohim. Using Torah as a veneer, a mask, veneer means disguise, mask for lunacy. First Samuel 25, Psalms 81, 3, Psalms 104, 19. He appointed the moon for the seasons, nonsense, is for the seasons of the night. When birds comes out and animals comes out and copulate, another word you can know what it is. Scripture cannot contradict scripture. And maths do not lie for the 396 solar days from Bid Miba, Numbers 33, verse 3, and Bid Miba, Numbers 10, 11. Truth, when it is first heard, is at times rejected. You know the parable of the sower? Where the sower went out and sowed seeds, and some fell by the wayside? Are we? And then the birds of the air came and ate them, and the seed was not planted, and some fell among thorns, etc. 
Well, I pray that today that this would at least, you may not understand it, but go home and let it go into your minds. Because truth, when it is first heard, is at times rejected. Then it is what? Violently opposed. And lastly, it becomes self-evident. I got it, you say. But it may take time. You may reject it. You're going to what? Violently, violently oppose it and want to kill me and stone me. That's okay. But lastly, it becomes self-evident. Father Elohim, Yahuwah in the heavens, those of us here in the Covenant Calendar Club, give us understanding of your plan of salvation. Help us to understand that, no doubt, it was on the 18th of the third month you gave the Ten Commandments, and that the Book of the Covenant was confirmed, no doubt, on the 19th of the third month. Father in heaven, this is just a reference point of better things to come because we are under a new covenant with better promises. This is only going back to history to help us so that we will not follow the examples of the congregation of Israel and to be stubborn and to be disobedient, etc., and to be indulged in revelry. Help us to understand your word so we can escape the disaster of the things to come and to get away from all of this COVID mess that exists and the vaccine that is about to come upon this country. It's time for us to flee to in the wilderness and be protected there, Father, and hopefully bring our families along as you protected Rahab the harlot when they came to Jericho. At least her, her brothers, her mothers, and her fathers were saved because of the faith that she has. Be with us, help us, dear Father, that we not have the faith of Yahusha in us. And we will not be afraid of anything that will come near our tent. Because we have a building in the heavens, not made with hands. If this building, our tent, our bodies was dissolved. We thank for you and we are grateful for that provision. Because it is guaranteed because, because we have the Ruach HaKadosh. Give us understanding, I pray of the covenant calendar and their father we're looking forward for better promises to come their father and even a new calendar as well and we give the thanks where there is no moon and there is no sun and you will dwell for us for all eternity in the new heavens and in the new earth in which we look forward to a home of righteousness now and forever and forever i pray amen amen and amen Hallelujah. Thank you, brother, for that um, teaching. Again, I, I really had a, <clears throat> a better um, understanding today. Um, a lot of information, so I, was, I kept some notes and things in regards to making sure that um, yes, I just uh, fully it. dissect that. It's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's another view, right? But it's good. It's, it, it's another view. Yes, it's another view. And read Exodus 19 to 24 because we have this platform and we can have we can have views once we can bring scriptures to support that view without being controversial. That's it. And just like Matthew Nolan, he could have, for example, when he went to Revelation 20, he left it and says, read it. Because I'm not going to give you what is pre-millennial, post-millennial, and he gives a point of view. And so, therefore, I follow that platform. If once it can agree with scripture, and I can point it out using scripture for another point of view, and others may use it for a different point of view, but should not be controversial. We should be in one accord and should not have the biasness, etc., and have the mind of the Mashiach because all of us, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we see through a glass darkly. Even Shaul was seeing things darkly to a glass. Mm. 
The full yeah. revelation didn't come, but at least he gave us some revelation. Even he himself, much less poor me. Yeah, I th and I think right now, I mean, Yahuwah is revealing in this last days, you know, the, the truth, those things that he hid for us to find. And uh, we're so blessed by that through the diligent study. And, and uh, thank you for bringing that out. Um, I was actually um, looking at all the different times that Yahuwah and, you know, while Moshe went up to the mountain, you know, just, just in chapter 19 alone is, is quite a bit. Um, and then, um, you know, right, right as they were going to receive the, the, um, the covenant. Um, and just to wanted to clarify one thing you did mention that, um, on, uh, was it numbers like they, they received the, I'm trying to remember that you, they received the book of the testimony with the book of the covenant, but what you're saying is the, they actually received that on the 20th. On the 19th. In other words, the, the Ten Commandments were on spoken the on the 18th. Right. And then the book, the next day, according to the scriptures here, Torah, yeah. they received, the book of the covenant was confirmed in Exodus 24, verse 7. The next day, after he wrote everything down. No doubt during the night, on the 18th, when all of those words were spoken in Exodus 21 to 23. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that's a line, right? I mean, we have, because um, it does line up with Pentecost as well. You know, the Torah is going to go out of Jerusalem, right? <laughs> So that was, you know, not as a future prophecy, but that does apply for, you know, receiving the covenant, as re you know, for us to be preaching the covenant to the nations. Yeah, for all right. I, I'm not here trying to show, um, to uh, shout at nobody. I'm not here trying to. Uh, I'm it's just preaching. trying to wake us up, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and these, these are these are the last. We always say these are the last days, anyway. Yeah. But I just would encourage um, you to read um, Exodus 19 to 24 and let us know how many ascent between those um, chapters that Moses went up the mountain because even Jubilees had it wrong. They only started in Exodus 24 verse 11. They did not go to 19 up here. They did not go to the other. They never did. Right. Even they themselves yeah. went off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wrong. There are contradictions in that book for sure. Yeah, it's good to stick with the um, with the sixty six. That's why I um, stick with the um, Torah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and excellent, excellent. Well, does anyone have any uh, questions or or comments um, regarding this teaching? Okay. Yeah, so as, as in Numbers um, 10, 11, it, it says, now it came down to pass on the 20th day of the second month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of the testimony. Okay, so, so yeah, if we group that together with, um, is it Numbers 33? We can, um, yeah, so, we can count, you know, how many days are between those two dates. And they, this actually is a good confirmation of the 30 day count too. You know, who yeah, it is. Their, it is. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And that is what we have to do because you could be here talking about moon, 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 moon. That's good. But let me tell you this, they will always have objections regardless of what, mm -hmm. but when you bring the mats, ah, you made it, you're going to have to make them think. That's the purpose. Challenge yeah. them. Yeah, and you brought up uh, Psalms 104.19. That Correct. is, um, it, it reads, he appointed the moon for seasons, right? And the sun knows it's going down. 
a lot of people, this is like a lot of uh, people's uh, go-to verse because they will match, because I, I, I thought the same thing. They'll, they'll align this with the uh, Genesis 1.14 and say, look, this is for seasons. This is for the Moedims, you know? And, uh, and they think that automatically it has to do with, uh, with years and, and, and days and counting days and all that. And, but what they don't, what they failed to a lot of people fail to do is keep reading what the Psalms context is all about. And it's not about a, um, a seasons to figure out the days, but a season uh, for agriculture and for animals and, and those things. So it has nothing to do with day counting, but they, they, will, they will use that and, and, and apply it to um, 114 when not even Moon is mentioned on that verse. Moon is not even mentioned on there. Um, that wasn't mentioned until uh, the dream of Joseph. We also have a teaching that shows that the lesser light, uh, the, the word lesser in actual Hebrew uh, really means little. And if you go to that Hebrew word, you'll see that uh, it is uh, the majority of time um, it reads and it's uh, translated as little, like little lights. So, um, so that is a, um, uh, a lot of, you know, that's a, an error that people make when they read that and they think the lesser light is automatically talking about the moon. And if, if you look at the Hebrew word, lesser, and you, you, you have more of an indication of what it is. Um, but yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. I appreciate that, brother. And um, it, it's a very really challenging um, to, for many. <laughs> Well, it's just it's, it's a part of the calendar. I mean, if the Creator gave um, Torah to the tribes, the understanding of the three sixty days year calendar for some reason, He has a He has a plan behind it. I'm sure of it, and I'm glad that I'm able because I used to be a Zadokite or Qumran leaning towards that myself. But then I check out three sixty days as well and remove my bias, the rule Kakadesh, remove the biases that I had. And I, of course, saw something in the 360 days calendar that I never saw in others and forget about lunar construction. I used to be in that for years and years and years. Whoop. I take it and throw it out into the garbage. Well, thank you, Hua, for that. Now you, now you can uh, help us uh, discern um, those things so people don't get entrapped by them. And I appreciate it. Like Paul, you know, like Paul, you know. I'm a, yeah, I'm you, a you, Paul you, on the road to Damascus. Yeah. I yeah. was struck down by lightning. <laughs> he didn't kill me. He says, no, I'll save you. Listen to what I have to say. You are stubborn, rebellious, Israelite. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Someone's we need a little, uh, uh, something to spark us up, you know, to, to shine that, that light in, in, into those, those places where we need understanding. Well, um, says, <laughs> yes, All right, well. what would you have me to do? <laughs> yes, master, what would you have me to do? <laughs> well, we, we, we would love all that, you know, we would all like have to have that piece of that uh, glimpse of, of his glory, you know, what, what is to come. And um, I think we've all received here, at least most of us have received uh, some, some of what that, what that means in, in a small scale, what is to come. And we're going to be in the glory of our, of, uh, of our master Yahushua one day while he's fought, he shine, um, shines upon us. So. Can't wait for that. Well, it is you a know, wonderful. Sh yeah, go ahead. You know the prophets. The prophets never volunteered to be prophets. You know, the prophets in them <laughs> never volunteered to be prophets that's, because that's they right. recognized yeah. the meeting as stiff neck people. <laughs> Jeremiah never volunteered. None of them volunteered to be prophets. No, he didn't. They no, were called. Didn't. Amen. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, but you know what happened? You don't go to Nineveh. I'm going to prepare fish you're, for you. Yeah, yeah, you're going to go, whether you want it, going to go what or not. What do you say? I have the greater will. <laughs> amen, amen. He controls those, the, that path for you. Um, that's true. That's true, right? And um, yeah, it's, it's the least least expect, the, the least likely is sometimes the one he chooses, which is, which is a blessing. Um, and he hates one of you. I hope one of you here could, yeah. could um. And what you call pass me, okay? I know this calendar even better than myself. So you who are here, perhaps one of these days, the next five years, man, you're up here on the platform and you got it, man. I says, 
May you be blessed. And I will be so happy to just sit back and hear what you have to say and enjoy your covenant calendar lessons. If we last that long, hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep digging. There's plenty of material there. So it'll keep us busy for a lifetime, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. Well, um, well, I hope everyone enjoyed this, um, this uh, two teachings we did today. And I hope that everyone has a peaceful and uh, delightful Shabbat. Um, praise, praise to Yahuwah uh, for all of it and, um, and for allowing us here to, um, you know, speak uh, these um, teachings out to you openly. And of course, uh, you all are a big part of this. So, you know, your, um, your feedbacks and suggestions your questions really help us grow so um, thank you well uh, he is you know shaping us and molding us and um, and uh, not of ourselves but he's actually doing he's the architect and the master physician in our lives and um, he is the the potter we are the clay all right well I, I hope that um, y'all have a blessed about I'll see some of you in a few minutes um, we're gonna go ahead and give up the room to the um, Shabbat fellowship coming up uh, unless somebody has a, any questions or comments before we do that. And if somebody can please volunteer uh, to pray us out, it would be great. Well, Father in heaven, All right. I thank you so much for some understanding. And I give everything back to you. I do not take it of my own accord. I'm just a vessel, I'm a conduit, I'm a pipe. But I pray that those who listen today would have been edified, built up in the most set apart spirit. And I do pray that you will give them a better understanding and their father that they will look forward to Yahusha who is the author and finisher of their fate. Bless them during this coming week. Protect them from harm and danger. Keep them in your protection. There's a lot of messengers out there in the heavens, their father, that you can assign to protect your people, the woman, their father, of the Melchizedek order. Guide us, direct us, and keep us and our families safe and that we will return their father wholesome, complete, and well in the most set of our spirit. Thank you so much for being with us and helping us during these times in which we live. And we're looking forward by the faith of Yahusha for better times and better days that lies ahead and will be for all eternity as we look forward to new heavens and new earth where dwell righteousness. We do pray in Yahshua's name. Amen.